we're going to be talking about local features. So what I'm going to go do is share my screen, start the presentation, uh, just going to talk through five features that are part of local, um, things that you may or may not know about. I didn't know about some of them up until the last couple of months, uh, primarily because I use local just for theme testing and quick dev work. Uh, but as I have investigated it a little bit further, realized just how powerful and just how awesome it can be. So uh, I want to show those with you. And so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we will start the presentation. Share my desktop. Hopefully we're good to go. Uh, quick thumbs up if you can see my screen. I'm going to make sure that everything is there. Awesome, everybody. Uh, again, so uh, this is local. Uh, we're going to talk about using local five powerful features. Uh, there are plenty more beyond that, but the ones I'm going to cover today are live links, image optimizer, cloud backups, local connect, and blueprints. All of them have sort of a place in the development workflow, uh, most of which are now part of my development workflow. And so I'm just going to go through and demonstrate each of the features, talk it through a little bit, show you how it works. Uh, we'll leave that open for Q&A, and then we'll just jump on to the next one, and we'll go from there. So Live Links. Live Links is a feature that uh, works really easily, and it's quite um, it's a good feature if you have clients that you just want to show the work that you're working on. If you're developing locally with local uh, and you're building things out, uh, local has a feature called Live Links, and this allows you to send out a URL to a customer and... Um, allow them to see the work that you're doing on your local machine. Seems kind of weird, but it is. Uh, obviously, you need to have Wi-Fi enabled so that the connection can take place. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of walk through what live links are. So I'm going to go into one of my sites. This is my local environment here. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate how this works because I'm going to send a live link to uh, everybody in the chat here. And you can see how this works. So this is my website. This is uh, Frostscape. It's a blueprint that I created, uh, which we'll get to in a bit, created for the Frost theme. And so inside of the tools menu here, you have the live links feature. Uh, what you need to do, obviously, is turn on the live links feature. It kind of does its thing a little bit. It generates this URL here that is um, that can be changed. You can update it. Uh, I think it sort of auto generates a sort of two word hyphenated thing. Uh, just so that uh, we can kind of control how that works. And so um, we've got the live link here. This is the shareable URL that you would send to your client. You can create your own username and password just for them to use. Uh, and so it looks like I've got everything on. And so what I'm going to do is double check that because Frost and Frost my username and password. And so this now is a live link, which I'm going to go into the chat and I'm going to paste this here. Frost and Frost, uh, lowercase f. I don't know why that auto. So pretend that you are a client of mine and this is a site that I'm working on for you. And I'm going to send you this link. I'm working locally on my machine, so I don't have to set up anything in production or online yet. Uh, but I want to just show you where I'm at with this. And so let me remove this chat over here. Uh, and so quick thumbs up if you're able to access this site. Uh, so you can now see the site that I'm working on. And again, I need to be uh, connected to the internet. There's uh, a couple of caveats here. Uh, my local needs to be on, on my machine because that's how the connection takes place. Uh, but this is a quick way if you're working on something and you're slacking back and forth with the client and you want them to see what you're up to and see how things look. And you can kind of go back and forth locally uh, on your machine to make all of your changes and edits to the theme. And so this is uh, a really cool feature. Not a lot of people know about it, but it's a really good shareable way, very low hanging fruit way to sort of spin something up and then share it without having to, you know, do a whole WordPress install, add a site to, you know, one of your accounts or whatever. And so uh, local is obviously a free development tool. So it's a really easy, fun way to just spin something up and share it. Okay, so uh, questions before I move on to the next feature. I see Jesse's, do you know if there's any sync lag between updates and local and what a client could see? I'm going to defer to Austin uh, on this one. I don't think so. Uh, from what I understand, this is just, um, you know, if there is, it might be maybe a couple seconds. But uh, Austin, do you know if there's any 
uh, significant lag there? Uh, nope. There shouldn't be any significant sync lag or anything like that. So we could probably test that if I just went in and changed something, you guys could probably see it live. Uh, and so that would confirm that that's the case. So live links again, uh, going back to the screen, uh, you can turn, I'm going to turn this off. This was sort of close the connection between you and I, and if for some reason you need to update either the URL, there's a little regeneration button here. Again, it just grabs kind of two compound words just to kind of give some sort of a unique URL. Um, and then you can uh, obviously change the username and password at, at will too. And then if you want to turn it back on, uh, you would have to give the new URL. Tracy, I see your question. Is this available on the free plan? Yes. Live links is part of Local's free feature set. And there's no paid, um, nothing you need to do to, to pay and use this. So it's part of the beauty of all of what Local offers. Okay, so that's live links. It allows you to transform your locally built site into a shareable test environment. Image optimizer. Now this is something, uh, and it's especially important as you uh, as we get through this workshop and kind of talk about uh, pushing to to live through local connect and stuff like that, uh, where a lot of people download images from the internet, use their phone or whatever, and then just upload them through WordPress. Now, generally nothing wrong with that, with the exception of the images usually have huge file sizes uh, associated with that. And so there are several um, online tools that you can use to optimize images. Basically what it does is it compress the file size. So maybe you have an image that you upload that would normally have been five meg. Image optimization, what it does is it compresses it. It keeps the quality of it visually, but just compresses the file. And sometimes it can go down to as small as 10% of the original file size. So if you think about sites that have a lot of media, this is a very important thing. And so with local, uh, it's very auto, auto magic. So I'm going to go through the uh, this Frostscape uh, site that I have. I will. I, there's several images in here. And also when you upload an image, WordPress uh, creates sometimes two or three or four different variations of it. It does some cropping. And so... Uh, even though you may have five images uploaded, there might be 20 or 25 images sort of inside your website, all of which get used in some capacity. Uh, so going back to my Frostscape site here, I'm going to go back to tools and there's image optimizer. And you can see here that this kind of gives a list. It scans the site. I believe it's the WP content uploads directory. And it says, hey, you got 77 images on your site that are slowing it down. Uh, and so... Uh, what you can do is you can scan the images, scan for images, and that then compiles that number. Uh, and then you can go to view images. You can say, hey, what are the images that you're talking about? And so here's an example of uh, each of the images that are on my site. Uh, and it gives the file size also. You can see I uploaded a file called about and WordPress. Uh, and you can change this and turn this off. But just by default, WordPress also makes four other sizes of it. And so uh, even though I uploaded one, there's five that exist that can be used throughout the site. Uh, and so what you can do is you can select and deselect uh, which images you want to optimize. And 77 images would take you quite some time to do one at a time. Uh, but with local, you can select all your images. You can hit optimize images, hit the button. And as you can see here, it goes through and optimizes them for you. Now, You'll see in this case, it's the same size. And that's because I actually optimized my images before I upload them. So this about uh, file would have normally been a high, higher file size, in which case the compressed version would be smaller. But in my case, because I've already optimized it, that's why it's reporting back as the same file size. So um, just want to quickly check. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Tracy, I was looking at your, your comment about the, the live links. Uh, I'm happy to reactivate that and resend a different URL. If people want to check that out, just kind of click around. Um, maybe when we get to the blueprint section, I'll do that. Then you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so Image Optimizer is also a free add-on uh, with Local. It's just something that, again, uh, with a couple of clicks, you can easily optimize things. And when you're working locally, it probably matters a little bit less. But if you're actually using local to develop a client site that you're going to push to live, you absolutely want your images optimized. And in this case, you can do it with just one click, not having to use a different tool and not knowing 
how to have to go do all of that. So another great feature of local, very simple, very powerful feature uh, that a lot of people like to use. All right, next feature, cloud backups. Uh, this is something I personally don't use, but I know a lot of people who do use it. Now, uh, cloud backups allows you to take uh, the content of your site in local and then do like a sort of a snapshot of it, a backup in case you want to, you know, for some reason, restore something you did a few days ago or whatever. Uh, it's just kind of a good way to take something and store it in the cloud. Now, uh, the way cloud backups work, I'll go into my Frostscape site. Uh, going back to tools. Now, I believe Cloud Backups is an add-on that you have to just uh, search for inside of the add-ons over here. This will show up. I believe Cloud Backups is one of them. Uh, you may have to just auto-install that, uh, which happens very easily. And so you're in Cloud Backups. And you have two options to connect. You can either connect through uh, Google Drive or you can connect through uh, Dropbox. So I'm going to go through here and just kind of walk through what this looks like. Uh, so I'm in my Frostscape site. I'm on Cloud Backups, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to connect my provider. Uh, and again, like I said, these are the two options right now. I'm going to connect uh, to Google Drive. And I'm going to select my personal account. I'm going to allow the access for local to, to do that. And you can see here now, this is connected to my Google Drive, my email address. Uh, and so... We are now here. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to back up my site now. I've uh, it's sort of refreshed itself. It shows that it's going to back up to Google Drive. Uh, I'm assuming you can connect to both, and then choose when you go to actually click the backup site button if you want it to go to Google Drive or Dropbox if you're using both connections. Uh, and so I'm going to go and just click this backup site, and I'm going to call this Brian's backup. Uh, just to make sure it tells you about the estimated file size. And I'm going to, da, 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 da. if there's some if files you want to ignore, you're allowed to go in there and just kind of specify those. Um, but I just want a quick backup. So I'm going to go ahead and click the button. And it's currently showing the progress as backing up. And once that's done, I'll go into Google Drive and just show you what that looks like as a demonstration. Sometimes it takes uh, with 120 meg a little bit of time to sort of do its thing, compress it, and then upload it to uh, either of the locations. Uh, and yes, as Damon points out, it's obviously very helpful to have, and most people do, either Google Drive access or uh, a Dropbox account. And so it's very easy to go in and find uh, where the file exists after the backup takes place. Uh, hopefully it won't take too, too long. Just let it do its thing. I'll look for questions in the meantime. Thank you, Damon, for posting the link. Probably should have done this ahead of time. My apologies. I'm going to see. If it shows already, uh, nope, this is not what I'm looking for. Google Drive, da, 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 local backups. So it creates a folder called local backups, and this would be the, fo the, the file that then it got generated. Uh, and so if you create multiple backups, this folder will just start to house all of the, uh, the backups in there. Um, Just want to make sure uh, we've got somebody. Oops, I'm sorry. Let me go off screen share for a second. We've got somebody not on mute. There we go. Okie dokie. Sorry about that. Okay, so as you can see, the cloud backup is complete. Uh, it's successful. You get a message up here at the top. And then this will be sort of a historical list of the backups, when it was created, what it's called. Uh, if you want to go in and you can restore your site to a certain backup, you can. Uh, you can say, hey, you know what? I've got what I want here. Um, let me kind of fork this and create a different site in local. 
using any of the backups that are here. Like if you're halfway through something and you realize you want to like take one of your uh, restorations and put that into its own site, you can create a new site using um, that backup, or you can manage it by uh, changing the name. And then again, you can also delete it inside of your Google Drive account. So this is uh, the way cloud backups work. And so again, if you have a backup from something you did yesterday and something happened today where you did a bunch of things and deleted a bunch of things you didn't mean to, very easy to just sort of revert back to uh, what you have. So I uh, just want to check the the chat to make sure I have not missed anything. Does not look like it. Yes, and so as Damon points out, uh, also helpful, you can, if you have local installed on different machines, you're able to sort of connect from either one. Uh, I have an iMac and a MacBook, so I'm often back and forthing between uh, the two instances of local, so I can sort of connect all the way up into my Google Drive on both machines. So if I'm sitting on my chair that's behind me and I want to pull down something that I created on the computer that I'm at now, I can do that very easily. So uh, cloud backups is, oops, let me close a couple of these here, is feature number three. So uh, the next one I'm going to talk about is local connect. And this is where things really start to become uh, awesome and powerful, especially for people who want to spin something up locally and work locally uh, on client sites and then push that to uh, currently our options are uh, WP Engine or Flywheel. It's very easy for us to thank you, Damon, for that uh, link, Local Connect. And so I'm going to demonstrate what this looks like. So um, Local Connect is, the, is a feature inside of Local, obviously free, uh, which allows you to take your site that you build locally and then push it to a real hosting uh, a site hosted at either WP Engine or Flywheel. It allows you to take that and basically take it and make it production ready. And so uh, I'm going to go back here. I'm over here in uh, my Frostscape theme. And so uh, if you go to Tools, oops, my bad. It's not in Tools. It's down here in the lower right-hand corner. Forgot. <laughs> uh, you can see here where it says Connect Host. And so uh, I'm inside of my Frostscape th site. I'm going to click this and the options, obviously. Um, and Tracy, you ask a fantastic question. I don't know if Austin Went is on this call. Austin Reddick might have the answer to this. Uh, I don't know the answer to that, which is uh, the question I think we get often, which is how do I do this? And there are other ways to possibly do that. Um, Damon, you might know if there's like migrate uh, plugin capabilities that allow you to take this and push this into something outside of WP Engine or Flywheel. Uh, feel free to use the chat to uh, anybody from our team who has that answer. I know right now, um, just WP Engine and Flywheel are the two options. And so I'm, I've am i clicked Connect Host, and obviously these are my two options. I have a WP Engine account, so uh, I'm going to log into that account. And it takes you to this screen, which is uh, it, it needs the API credentials to help do its thing. Uh, so what I'm going to do uh, is my WP Engine. I need to log into my WP Engine. Thank you, Austin Went, for um, for being here and answering the question. Okay, so this is my WP Engine account. Uh, if you go under Users and then select API Access, this takes you to a screen here where you can generate the credentials. This is what it's looking for. Uh, so if you click the Generate Credentials button, it gives you an API username and password. So I'm going to click this Copy button here. I'm going to go back to Local. I'm just going to paste it in right there. And I'm going to do the same thing with the password. And so what I've done is I've basically allowed the connection the AP, through the APIs uh, from my local to push to my WP Engine account. You need to kind of give it uh, that authority. So I'm going to select Connect to WP Engine. And so what it's doing now is it's connected this instance uh, of my local, specifically Frostscape, to um, my WP Engine hosting account where I have an available site. Now, uh, this let's just say this Frostscape is where I want it to be. Uh, I can go down here. Oops. This is in the wrong spot. There we go. Uh, so WP Engine is now connected. So I'm going to select this. And when you select that connection, you have the option to either push up or pull down, right? So it says pull from WP Engine account on this first icon. Second icon is push to WP Engine. Now, 
Uh, my WP Engine account currently has this. I just created a, a basic site uh, called Frostscape. I is a brand new site. I haven't done anything with it. Uh, so I just created it so it's there. Uh, and so if I go here and I select the second icon, push to WP Engine, it's going to take this instance, this website that I've created here locally called Frostscape. Uh, if you do that, it then it through the API connection, grabs the sites that you have available. Uh, and so if I select Frostscape, and then I can sort of select the environment and all of that, um, I'm going to just make it go production ready. I'm going to include the database. I think it's determining some things here. Uh, and so if I were to select push to WP Engine, it would then take this website that I have here, a local, push it to my account. All these files are going to be uh, created. And I would say push to WP Engine. And what it's doing is it, it creates a site backup on WP Engine and then makes all of the site here on my local machine to the, it pushes it to the WP Engine account. And from there, it's a live site. If I have a URL connected and all of that stuff, that's how you can then truly send to production. Uh, and if I'm on that site in the WP Admin, the live site doing some things, I can then also pull that back down to my local, sort of using that same in the lower right-hand corner, you would say pull from WP Engine. So if I've made any changes, on the live site, if I'm kind of working back and forth, uh, you can pull them back down into your local so that they stay synced. So that is a very powerful feature. Um, I think Austin, yes, there, it, we're exploring ways beyond just the two uh, hosting um, brands that we have. So um, let's see, perfect. Uh, team, did I miss anything uh, here relative to local connect? I know it's a pretty uh, robust feature. Uh, it really is as easy as I just walked you through. You just have to know how to find the API credentials and just link things up. Uh, but a lot of people, a lot of agencies uh, who build their sites locally, use local uh, to be able to just push and pull and do all the work. You can you know, optimize all your images and then deploy those changes. And you can make more changes and deploy those changes. And uh, if you don't want to share a live URL yet, you can use live links to show people the progress that you're making. So there's a lot of interesting things here um, as well. So I just, uh, da, 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 da. okay, looking at Tracy's comments. So that is Local Connect, which is a very, again, powerful feature. Uh, and this one might be my favorite one. This is Local Blueprints. Now, Blueprints kind of serve several purposes. Uh, it allows you to save your site, your theme, your plugins, everything that you have in your WordPress install. Uh, and kind of bundle it up into like a zip file. Now, a couple of things you can do with that. Uh, if you have, let's just say, um, and Damon's done this a couple of times, as well as our um, VP of product, uh, WP Engine, you've, you've made sort of like a template site for maybe testing purposes, whether you're testing the Gutenberg plugin, if you're doing like a theme test, you can kind of set up an environment where you've just got like certain plugins active. Uh, so you can create a blueprint and I will show you, let's see. So, uh, well, Frostscape is currently being busy by doing all this stuff. So I'll go into here. Uh, so I've got, let's just say, a site called Gutenberg. And this is where I basically just have WordPress installed, the Gutenberg plugin active, uh, both are up to date. And so this Gutenberg site exists. I just kind of use it for testing purposes. Uh, if you were to go here and start the site, you can get the site started. And if you were to right click on it, you can say save as blueprint. That means any what it does, it, it takes that site, that environment, and basically puts it into a zip file, which is accessible here in the blueprints tab. These are blueprints, and I'll walk through how this works. Uh, so in this instance, you can um, create a site from a blueprint. So you're like, hey, I want to spin up another quick testing thing, but I don't want to mess up the one I've got. You can create a site like this, hitting the plus button, create from a blueprint. If you were to hit continue, you can select the blueprints that you have, and then you can just create another site sort of using uh, the blueprint template that you've created. So this kind of works like internally, right? This is on your machine. This is kind of for more personal use. Uh, now, what I've done and another way to use the blueprint capability um, is uh, I've got this Frostscape <laughs> still doing its thing. Uh, so this Frostscape site, which is what I shared early on, this is like a true sort of demo site. 
Now, if you go to the Frost, and I'll do that really quickly here, the Frost website, we have a link here at the top called Blueprint. And what this is, is uh, an example. I'm going to click View Demo. This is a live version of the Blueprint that I shared earlier. Uh, so this is just like a little sample demo site using a style variation in Frost, some sort of sample content. Uh, oops, let me. Yep, perfect. And so what you can do is you can take this site, uh, which is the Frostgate site locally, and I've created a blueprint from that. And what I can do with that blueprint is then, and I'm clicking around here a little bit, sorry for the jumping around. Uh, you can make that here accessible to people to download. And why you would want to do this is in this case, it allows people to say, hey, you can easily drag one file over and create in local. You can recreate this demo site with within literally 10 or 15 seconds. Uh, if you're a product uh, designer or builder and you have theme demos that you're trying to help people get started, what it does is it allows you to basically give them uh, a head start. They don't have to go recreate and install a bunch of things to sort of recreate the demo. And, and so in this case, I'll, I'll walk you through how this works. And this is, uh, as a theme guy and a designer and a product guy, I love this capability. And so I have, like I said, uh, the Frostscape site uh, has uh, two blueprints. And so I've got for quick access, I've got the zip file here. And I want to show you how this works. So I'm going to just create a new site. Uh, I don't even need to select create from blueprint because I've got my file that I downloaded. And you take the file and literally just drag it over. And it asks you, uh, I'm just going to call it BP for blueprint, what you want the site to be named. And it just like automatically just imports the entire site, plugins, version of WordPress, whatever you have in that blueprint, uh, all of the pages, all of the images. Uh, you got to... allow it to do its thing. And so in just a second, I will show you what we have. Okay, so now I've got my Frostscape Blueprint site created in local. Uh, I'm gonna click this admin and admin. Uh, I believe that's even, yeah, admin and admin, the instructions here, uh, just for quick reference. Uh, I will save this and I'm gonna just view the site. So this is the site in one click that was recreated from the Blueprint uh, images and everything, as you can see. And just one click, you just, it's called an importable site, like, a, you know, import the, the site. And so as, a, as an example, like back in the days with StudioPress, imagine uh, we have the Genesis framework and a library of 20 child themes. Now, what would, what would have been really awesome back in the day is for us to have provided and local uh, wasn't around at that point and this capability didn't exist. Uh, but imagine having the capability where you bought the theme and along with it came a blueprint file that you were able to basically set up um, the demo site as you saw it in one click without having to do any work other than just literally drag a file into a screen. And so that's what uh, this other capability of blueprints does. Uh, and so I get excited about this again as a theme person because uh, I can design things that basically I could drop you a file and then you could install that on your local and have the exact same thing uh, within 10, 15, or 20 seconds. So that is uh, the gist of local blueprints. There's obviously different ways any of these features can be used, uh, but I want to just show one more zinger. And this is a relatively uh, recent addition to local. Uh, and you may have seen it happen here as I was toggling around. Uh, one of the, uh, especially for agencies and people who have multiple sites here in local, uh, is the ability to categorize your sites. Prior to maybe a month or two ago, uh, all it was was just one list of sites. And it got really long if you had 10, 20, 30, 40 sites. And so local now has the ability to categorize these sites, put them into sort of little folders. And so I've created a uh, category called test. This is just kind of where I have my testing sites. Uh, and maybe this would be like called clients. And this is where I keep all my client sites so I can keep them together. Uh, you can start them all at once. You can create a new group. You can rename groups. You can move. Uh, for instance, maybe I want to move Frost. Uh, I can add it move to a different group. I'm going to add it to my sites. 
just like that. Now it's inside of my sites. And so this is sort of like the hidden six feature uh, that's not part of the presentation, but here we go. Uh, here are some uh, very cool ways in which local can be used. And uh, that being said, uh, that concludes the end of the workshop. Again, this is a uh, one page slideshow that I created using the Frost theme, uh, using a blank um, template and just basically making each of these groups 100 viewport height. So it basically just spans the whole height of the viewport. And I'm using uh, basically the anchor links to just send people down. This is a little bit of an extra demo uh, to show people how this was made. So this is just literally one page. Uh, I'll even go behind the scenes and show you. This is just a page created in WordPress. And each of these groups, as I select them, uh, you can see here in the advanced tab, I've added an anchor link called like local connect for this particular group. That way uh, you can then assign this link. You just add the anchor link. Now it's part of Gutenberg right now, and it's going to be in WordPress 6.4, but the feet, the ability to go in and uh, with the anchor links kind of does it for you, but you can rename these groups uh, in 6.4 moving forward to make this all easier to see if you're creating a page like this. So that being said, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and just open this up to general questions specific to what I showed uh, or anything uh, local in general. And so feel free to uh, either use the chat or do like a hand raise emoji and we'll let you unmute if you have specific questions about what I showed, how things work, uh, what might be coming uh, now that we've got uh, full representation from our local team here, uh, they'd also be happy to uh, address any of those issues. So that being said, um, yeah, feel free to, to go ahead and ask any questions. Again, uh, I use local every day for some reason or another. Um, feel free to just ask, ask away. Um, and we'll just answer some questions. And then after that, this will be, um, We'll call it a wrap. Again, a replay of this will be added to our uh, WP Engine Builders YouTube channel within the next, probably by the end of the week for sure. Uh, and so if you want, if you missed anything or if I went something too quickly, uh, we'll have a replay. So, uh, okay, perfect question. Kelsey asks, uh, and either Austin or Austin, I'll defer to you. Um, I guess we're, it's probably representation of like the metrics in general around uh, you know, is there a way to sort of keep track of when a live link was accessed, like a log of, you know, a client viewed this at 3 p.m. or something to that effect. But uh, I'll defer to you guys on uh, if that's a feature or if that's a feature that might be coming. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Thanks, Kelsey. Um, not today. I don't think you can do that today. Uh, I'm trying to think like if the logs, because obviously the live link is served from from your machine. So I was trying to think if there was a way for even your machine to kind of uh, self-serve that information. I don't think that's possible. Um, I like the idea a lot. Um, I wouldn't say it's something we have like in our immediate backlog because I haven't thought about that too much, but it's something definitely we, something we can talk to the engineering team about and see what it would take to make that possible. Yeah, Tracy makes a good suggestion and we can, you know, I'm sure this is possible if you bit.ly or use some sort of like a link shortener and then use your live link as the forwards to um, at least uh, I'm going to presume that that would then be something that works where your bit.ly or whatever shortener that you're using that has metrics can tell you at least when that link was clicked or if it was clicked or at least uh, all of that. So um, that's kind of a, a, a good, it's also kind of a, a good way for you to customize that maybe to the client rather than serving them a sort of predetermined uh two word compound. I get a kick in every once in a while, I'll go to my live links and I'll just keep refreshing to see what words pop up. Cause it's kind of fun. Um, you know, like heated zebra or like blue sky or whatever. It's just kind of a fun way to pass a few minutes. So, um, if, if for whatever reason you don't want to send those links, you can send your bit.ly link or something to that effect or whatnot. So that would probably be the best way to handle that one. Any other questions? And as we're waiting, what I love about local is that um, 
it just works. I mean, there's some really robust features that work behind the scenes and they're all very easy to one click do this and that, but generally speaking, um, oh, perfect. Uh, this is outside of my, uh, so Austin or Austin, you're going to, I'm going to queue you up on the debugging one. Um, but low, you know, it's so easy to just spin up an instance. Like if I'm looking through the Gutenberg GitHub and I'm like, okay, here's something new, or I want to, you know, pull down the Gutenberg nightly, which is not anything I would want to have to like go do and install a whole setup on one of my WP engine accounts. It's so easy to just spin up a quick local instance, drop that Gutenberg nightly plugin in, just check to see something and then just delete it. Like I do that very often. So, um, you know, from that perspective, it's just, and once you start to understand how easy it is to work, then you'll start to incorporate that into your workflow. You're like, man, this used to normally take me five or 10 minutes to get something live. I just wanted to just check something out. And even if I wanted to show Damon something, you know, as we're just working through like an experiment on Slack, I can just do it, spin it up, send him a live link, and then he can see what I'm working on. And um, we can kind of go from there. So, uh, so debugging, give us a tour. Uh, Susan, do you have any specific questions relative to, to debugging or uh, is this a, is it, possible to just turn on debug mode inside of WordPress, which of course it is. Um, so if you had a specific question and wanted to unmute, feel free, or if you want to drop that in the chat, um, a little more context might be helpful in that regard. Give you a minute to type yeah. if. Yeah, if she's typing, I can also just take a stab at it too. Yep. Um, you know, live demos, whatever, what, what could go wrong with live demos, but mm -hmm. yeah, um, there was a question in the chat just about how long, um, live links stay open. So, mm -hmm. uh, the live links, this is something that we're also thinking through if there's a better way for us to, to do this and address it. So as it works today, uh, local obviously is making a connection through your computer. Uh, what that means is that, uh, if the computer stays open and local stays open, that live link, uh, stays alive. Um, I admittedly, like I get that's a, that's a limitation. So if you close your laptop then the live link dies, which isn't great. Um, but at least it does kind of facilitate, like if you're working or not your computer, you can have it open while, um, people are able to view it. Um, that live link stays open for 24 hours and then it closes itself. It's just kind of the timeout that it has right now. And you just have to reopen it again. Um, and it uses the same URL, same username, and password, just once every 24 hours, you kind of have to refresh it, so to speak. Um, so that's how it works. We're looking at ways to um, change that to either make it longer and make it more long lived, or maybe even truly be hosted is an idea that we're playing around with um, for like these temporary dev site type of ideas. Um, no promises yet on timeline, but it's something that we realize is kind of like a limitation of the current live links experience. Cool. Uh, so Susan has expanded a little bit on that one relative to debugging. Yeah, so, okay, let me, um, I can just screen share. And maybe this is stuff, Susan, you already know, but so this is just, this is my instance of local, um, same as Brian, I prefer dark mode. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I've got a site here. We were at WordCamp US a few weeks ago. This is just the, the site that I had set up, but, um, I've got my site started here. Um, by default, xdebug uh, is, is turned off. So down here at the bottom, you can see this quick toggle uh, to turn xdebug on and off very quickly. Um, if I turn that on, then obviously the site's going to restart. That's going to enable uh, xdebug for me. So then I kind of go in and start doing, um, doing some of those troubleshooting uh, steps. So if I, I guess this is going to open a browser, so you won't be able to see this. Let me switch screen share. So, okay, so I click that details button and this is what it opens. Um, this is super useful. I usually, if I'm using it, I'll just keep this window open. Like this is everything that um, Xdebug is configured with. So if you wanna get really into the weeds in terms of log levels um, and what those mean and like changing those, you can, you can edit a lot of these values in your PHP INI file for the site. Um, but we try to make it just the default should work for you, uh, should be pretty good. Then. As far as debugging your site, like it kind of depends on your site in and of itself. And what I always like to say, like putting your customer hat on. So, you know, opening your site and walking through the workflows that you would expect users who are visiting your site to be going through. Um, but then between a mix of like your local logs, but also kind of these diagnostics that pop up in Xdebug. Um, 
is is what I would recommend as far as uh, utilizing Xdebug. Um, if I may go back to local. So there's this, uh, if you're ever like looking for logs too, this is more of like, not necessarily Xdebug specific, but more generics. So there's this go to site folder. And again, I probably should just share my whole window. Uh, let me switch that again. All right. Are you seeing my desktop? Yep. Local? And the finder? Yep. Okay, cool. So um, if I hit go to site folder, it's going to open this for this specific site. So this is already on my machine where that's all located. There is a logs folder here. So I can go to both the Nginx and the PHP error logs if I'm trying to diagnose something specific with either of those two. Um, so that's super handy uh, for the site specific level. And then if I'm ever trying to diagnose something specific with local, um, if I go up here to this top menu bar here at the top where it says help, um, there's a reveal locals log and reveal locals of router logs. So maybe that's something else on your machine conflicting with local. Um, or you've hit an error in local and you're not sure what happened or how to fix it. Um, if you're ever like in our community forums, so I'll, I'll plug those community.localwp.com. Um, it's where we have some people who work in there, but also just the general WordPress community is kind of in there and hanging out and helping people. If you have a question, throw them in there. You'll One of the first questions you'll get is, can you send us your logs so we can take a look? Um, and that's how you would find them. But hopefully that's helpful. Maybe I didn't go quite as far, but... Cool. Uh, Austin Reddick uh, posted the link to the community forums also in the chat here too. So, um, so that's also helpful. Uh, so Rick, your question in point, I think Austin sort of alluded to the possibility of uh, our team looking into better ways to use live links and make that better functional. Uh, I think to your point there, uh, just the ability to just send a link and then, you know, go to the supermarket and not have to worry whether or not something will close or time out or whatever. Uh, so I think that uh, we're certainly looking for uh, better ways to provide a live link experience, but, you know, in a quick nutshell, it, it works as sort of we expect and under certain circumstances, you know, it just, it times out. But uh, other than that, I still think it's a helpful feature. So uh, again, more on that to come, no promises on which direction that might take, but uh, they're definitely looking into it. Well, cool. any other questions, uh, again, whether it's how to do this or feature requests or just curious if something's coming. I know, again, like I said, several members from our team are here. Um, uh, Austin or Austin, I'll defer to Gilberto's question or comment there. Examples are old, not very good for PHP 8.2, which I know is very new, so. Yeah, I think I wonder if I'm not sure if you're referencing. I'm not sure if Damon dropped a link. Uh, if you shoot, shoot over the link, we can definitely take a look and try to get those updated. Um, or two, I think there's a, um, if you don't want to do it live here, there's a section in our forums where you can always open a open a thread there and we can kind of collab on, on ways to improve the documentation. That'd be great. But good feedback. Thanks for calling yeah, that out. Let me grab um, while we're talking. Um, so this is a link to the Frost Blueprint, uh, which has a live demo of that blueprint uh, as well. So if you know you wanted to take a look at the demo and say, "Hey, this might be something I could sort of base," you know, maybe some brochure sites or some sort of uh, client site that I'm working on. Uh, what you could do is just you know view the demo, pull that down, stick it into local. Uh, and then just see how things are built even, right? Just if you're if you're looking to understand how full site editing works uh, with WordPress and how a block-based theme sort of functions, uh, this is just a good, easy, free way to just pull something down and pop open the hood and see uh, as we're looking at the screenshot on that page, even how that uh, one, two, three, four section was built. It just allows you to, you know, within 15 seconds, have it all up and running and you can see behind the hood or under the hood, how that works. So um Again, several ways to use all of this technology. And so once you understand kind of what it, what it is, how it works in some of these feature sets, you can incorporate that into your workflow and 
Uh, I hope that's that's helpful for whether you're a freelancer or an agency or kind of anywhere in between. Uh, this is definitely a good tool. So. Well, any other questions? If not, we can uh, call it a workshop. Again, I hope to, by the end of tomorrow, I'll have that up on the YouTube channel. So um, if you want to share this with somebody or uh, watch it again, feel free to do that. So um, yes, awesome. Good. Thank you, guys. Uh, appreciate everybody being here. Thanks to our team for helping support. Uh, I know I don't have answers to every question. I wish I could, but uh, there are people smarter than me here at the company who build this stuff. And so it was helpful to have them here. So thanks, uh, team, for being here. Thanks, Damon, for grabbing links and also for your help. And um, feel free. I'm going to grab one more link uh, while I'm here before we end this. Uh, I want to grab my personal Twitter account. This is a good place to follow me for things that I'm working on relative to local and WordPress and Frost. Uh, it's a good way to connect or if you want to connect beyond uh, this workshop or have questions, whether it's local or otherwise uh, relative to WordPress, uh, feel free to just shoot me a message on Twitter and then we can kind of carry on that conversation sort of in a one-on-one -on -one basis. So.